Hi and welcome to the Bonsai Garden. It's currently the middle of August and I'm just going around the garden doing various uh, small jobs on the trees, just checking up on things, trimming, um, and so on. <laughs> One of the jobs that seems to be constantly on the go is just trimming back the Chinese elm. So I'm just trimming back to a couple of new leaves. You see that these are quite vigorous, so they put on quite a lot of growth at this time of year. And then just determining which way the future growth will be, uh, depending on where I cut off the new shoots. So here, for example, if I cut off the new shoot just at that point, the new growth will be in the direction of this leaf. And if I was to cut a little bit further back, the new growth would come out in this direction. So I'm just really going around the tree and determining which way the future growth will be. Chinese elm does have a habit that uh, some of the new growth can grow back towards the centre of the tree. So I'm having to take that into consideration and removing that where possible. And with a bit of directional pruning, trying to direct any growth away from the centre of the tree. I'm trying to avoid crossing branches, that kind of thing, as much as possible. And because the growth is quite vigorous, I don't need to be too um, particular and fussy about where I make the cuts. Uh, if I make a cut in an area that's not quite right, um, something will grow back into that spot fairly quickly. Now this tree was a £10 uh, tree from the local supermarket Asda and uh, although it's never going to be an amazing tree it has filled out quite a bit now and will just continue to do so and I'll try and encourage as much ramification on there as possible to build up the canopy. Here's another one that was a local garden centre find I quite liked the pot on this one. Uh, I'm not sure about the soil it's in, but that will have to wait until spring. And again, I'm just going round and trimming back. And all this is doing is it's removing the outward growing shoots. And by removing those, I'm encouraging um, buds further back to develop into new shoots so we get a more twiggy dense canopy and this one has been a little less vigorous so there's a little less to do on here.
Here is a Kojo no Mei or Fuji Cherry. And I was going to um, hold off repotting it into this Tom Butterworth pot until spring of next year. But I know from experience and from working with Fuji Cherry um, that it's fairly robust. And so I wasn't greatly concerned about uh, repotting it at this time of year. In fact, it didn't require any root work. Uh, it was just really slick potted into this new pot. Which I think suits the tree very well. And I think that will look fairly spectacular come spring when it develops flowers. Here's a silver birch tree. The chocolate silver birch, I think it was. Um, Betula white chocolate, which I got from a local nursery. Now, I'm just really going around here and just snipping out the growing tips. And all that's going to do is it's going to redirect the growth of the tree further back and develop more branching. So I'm just really taking out the very ends. And it's the sort of thing that you'd probably be doing around the garden um, all through the sort of summer months. And so by taking out the end of the, the shoot there uh, are encouraging buds further back to develop and those will become future branches. And that's really as much as I need to do to this tree at the moment. And when it comes to spring, I will look at doing a proper styling on this tree. Here's my Benny Maker Japanese maple. And you can see that that's had um, new shoots coming out. And I'm just really going to snip those back. Again, to encourage ramification. This is the slowest growing of my Chinese elms. And I can see that, in fact, over the last month or so, it has put on a little bit of new growth. And I'm just going to pinch off the ends of those. And hopefully there will be a little bit more growth on this tree next year. The canopy is still quite sparse on it. This time of year, any time I come past the pond, the fish are waiting for food. Uh, 
There you go, feeding frenzy. God forbid any young children should fall in there. Not sure how long they will last. And I've just noticed, in fact, that there is a lily which has opened on the pond. Now, these tend to open and last for perhaps a couple of days, and then that's it, they're done. I'm just working my way along the benches here to see what needs any attention. And here's another one of the Chinese elms that will just need a bit of a trim. So just quickly going to whiz around this tree and give it a little bit of a trim. And I'm just trying to thin out the canopy a little so that uh, a bit more light gets towards the centre of the tree. I mean, again, it's a fairly vigorous tree, so I can be Again, it's a vigorous tree, so I don't need to be too scared about trimming off too much. It will grow back fairly quickly. And you can hear in the background the fish is still going mad for the food. And here's a bit of the carnage cam for our Canadian viewers. Just on the end of the bench here, I've got a crab apple tree, which is about four years old, uh, perhaps five years grown from a sapling which I bought from the Woodland Trust. Uh, they're actually a very good source of cheap um, material for anybody who wants a number of different trees to try. Uh, UK native species. 
Now, this particular tree does tend to suffer with woolly aphids from time to time and it was treated with an insecticide uh, just a couple of weeks ago and I can see that there's no longer any sign of infestation on there. I'm quite happy with that. If I just come in here to one of my larches, I can see there's been quite a bit of extension growth on there. Um, some of that I don't necessarily want. Particularly up here on the apex, this particular shoot um, has got a number of shoots coming off it and also extending in length and I don't particularly want that. So what I'm going to do just for the moment is snip that back to there. I'm just going to take off the bulk of that and then just quickly pop around the tree and take off some of this extending growth. Because what I don't want is length on this tree. Um, I don't mind it increasing in ramification, becoming more branchy. Uh, but what I don't want is these branches growing particularly any longer than they are. And I think we're good on there for the time being. I can see just next to that on the bench here is my uh, Chinese elm root over rock. And again, that's got some extension growth, which I just need to trim back and trim the whole thing just back to profile, really. So here we go. Not particularly taking a great deal of care or time or being fussy about which particular cuts I'm making. Um, I'm just really getting the thing back to a sort of domed shape. And again, it's another very vigorous tree. So I may well be doing this again in another two or three weeks. And I think we're good there. I've got a Catonia Aster here, which I've grown from a cutting. And it's got a bit of wire on it. I'm just checking to make sure that wire isn't causing any problems at the moment. And I think probably for the time being, I can leave that on there. Um, it may well be that the branches have set and therefore it's not really serving any real purpose. Um, I think I'll just leave that on there for another week or so. And then I'll come back and remove that. This is my tall Buddhist pine, which I bought from the Japanese garden at Newquay. Now, it does from time to time suffer with an infestation of moth larvae. And I think that's what's happened here. Uh, I'm just going to snip the end of that particular branch off. Uh, this is another tree that I sprayed a couple of weeks back, and I think we're okay now. I'm just looking at my Atropurpurium forest here. And it looks like we may have another tree on the edge of the pot, which may have died. Um, I suspect it's that the roots were too close to the edge of the pot. Uh, so I think in spring I'll be taking that out.
that might leave an odd number of trees in the pot. We'll see whether or not I replace it with another tree. I think there's sufficient number of trees in there that um, you don't necessarily stand and count them. And I think if you do, you're probably being a bit anal. So the new growth on this larger Chinese elm uh, does appear to be a little bit slower. So I won't be doing any more trimming on that just at the moment. This cascade juniper here has suffered with rust in the past. So I'm just checking and making sure that that looks okay. There's no sign at the moment. Um, I cut off a branch here which had um, the fungus growing in it. Uh, the rest of it looks okay at the moment. I do need to apply some wire to this just to get the shape back again. To the cascade and just looking at the back here this is my orange dream japanese maple uh, five tree um, grove and you can see clearly one of those has died so i will be removing that in fact i think what i'll do is i'll just snip that off at the base just so I don't have to look at it anymore. It's just a reminder of my failure. And I've got a handful of trees, um, one of which I will be putting in the pot in spring. Now, I don't recall that this tree has had any uh, root pruning or any root work in the last two years so it will be due to be repotted in spring anyway and i'm just looking around the garden and just making sure everything else looks fine so we've got a pseudo larix there um looks okay perhaps needs a little bit of water we've got here a azalea which hasn't flowered so far this year it has got some wire on it, so I think I need to uh, give that some attention and remove that wire. So this wire has probably been on since spring. And it's served its purpose to uh, position the branches, so it's time to take that off. It can mark azalea quite easily. And I've also had uh, situations where it's strangulated branches and caused them to die off. So I just need to be careful to make sure this doesn't stay on too long. I'm hoping that we'll get some flowers from this next year. Certainly haven't had any this year. And the flowers on this are a really brilliant pink. You can also see it looks quite dry um, in the south of England at the moment, particularly with the long dry summer we've had, uh, there are hosepipe bands. And where I am in West Yorkshire, uh, we don't have a hosepipe ban at the moment, but it is likely one will come in in the next couple of weeks. Try and preserve water. Now, I do have a couple of water butts collecting rainwater from the roof. Although I tend to use a hose pipe for watering, I just find it's that much more convenient. Uh, I've got so many trees it would take several trips with a watering can, it's just tedious. So it's much more convenient with the hose pipe. Uh, because I keep fish as well, um, there is a chlorine, um, a defilter 
on the hose pipe, so the water I use for feeding, uh, watering the plants is dechlorinated. Wouldn't be very good for the fish otherwise. And speaking of which, I think I'll just give this a, a dash of water. I have also got some azalea feed. I may have to give it and see whether that helps perk it up. And just before I pop that back, I'm just going to snip out some of the ends from the growing tips. Again, in the hope of encouraging a bit of bud back and growth further in towards the centre of the tree so it doesn't look quite so twiggy and sparse. And if I did this any later in the year, then I run the risk of removing next year's flowers, which in fact might be what happened last year. This is another garden centre azalea in this lovely round, uh, rust brown drum pot with really nice sort of stud detail on it. And I'm just really going around removing wire from the tree. And this particular tree has a really brilliant red flower, which really complements the pot. I did notice as I was working on the tree that one of the branches was broken, snapped, and although the cambium was still connected, uh, the wood was separated. So I thought what I might do was try gluing with super glue. Just put a little hook around there, and then I want to provide a bit of tension over here. And I can remove some of the excess. It's literally just providing a bit of tension to pull the glued branch back together just until the glue sets. And I think we're good there. So you can see here's the point at which the glue was applied. And we're just putting a bit of tension there just to reattach. And the final job I'm intending on doing today is there's a hawthorn here 
uh, which has extended quite a lot. And I just want to trim some of this extension growth back. You can see there, uh, perhaps six to eight inches worth of growth, which is great for putting on thickness um, in the trunk. All of this foliage is feeding back energy into the trunk. Um, but at some point this growth needs to go. And my cutting off the tips of that will encourage buds further back to develop into branches and shoots. And there we go, we just tamed the back growth a bit. And again, for the benefit of our friends overseas, here's the carnage cam. Let me know when you get seasick. Just before I finish, as I've been working, I've got here beside me on the table, my $50 bonsai challenge tree. And I'm just looking at this particular branch here, which looks a bit long and a little bit awkward and I'm thinking I'm going to take that off to improve the design so there we go goodbye branch and you can see the tree is looking fairly healthy and I don't see any reason why that won't survive So there you go, that was just a number of jobs that needed doing around the garden, going around reviewing some of the trees. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts and comments below and hope to catch you soon. Bye now.